Hey y'all, Simpson here. I've got my story for uh, Good Morning Zompok. It's called Sound Effects. <laughs> and, uh, a little different. I hope you like it. We'll see. No, no, no! She screamed in fury and ripped the buds from her ears, ignoring the startled looks from other early morning joggers. She tore the iPod from its holder on her arm and slammed it to the ground, then stomped it repeatedly, screaming in satisfaction as it shattered and electronic pieces flew across the path. You ruin everything! Why does he always use you? Why don't you just die? She yelled at the broken machine and kicked the remains towards the pond, sending the already wary swans fleeing for quieter waters. The children that had been feeding them started crying, frightened at the outburst, and were pulled into the protective arms of their mothers. She ignored their shocked expressions and pounded her fists against her head, trying to get the ridiculous voice of the narrator out of it. She hate, hate, hated him. He always sounded like he was chewing on a carrot when he spoke. And then, when he did the sound effects, it destroyed the whole book. Miss, are you okay? A man's voice cut through the rampaging anger that turned her world blood red. She whirled on him, seeing him for what he really was. Not a concerned citizen, not a fellow jogger in the park. He was one of his men, following her, spying on her, watching her reactions. They knew she would be listening to the book this morning. They knew she'd bought it last night, the second it became available. They knew she'd downloaded it to her iPod. They knew her habits. They were filming everything, just so they could watch it later and laugh at how his pathetic attempt at narrating a book would affect her. You tell him he doesn't deserve to even hold the words of Mr. Simpson in his hands, she screamed, let alone make the rest of us suffer listening to his clumsy, ham-fisted attempts at reading them. Ma'am? the man asked, wondering why he'd even gotten involved. At first he thought she must have broken up with her boyfriend, or someone died and she'd learned about it on her phone. But it was a music player she'd been smashing. Who could possibly get so upset over music? You know what I'm talking about, she yelled in his face, frothy spittle flying. Him, that snag flacking mulch mouth baboon who reads Mr. Simpson's books. She willfully calmed herself and then continued, Look, I can tolerate his clumsy reading. No one can do justice to Simpson's genius. No one can speak his words aloud the way they should. No one can have the perfect nuance on each carefully chosen word coming from his typewriter. But this guy, she gestured wildly and the man stepped back, realizing she was a full-blown nut job. This guy and his grand trazzing special effects. You tell him he ruins it. Tell him his screams are cat poop. His moans are dog vomit. His women's voices begging for mercy sound like giggly teenagers having a sleepover. You tell him because he doesn't listen to me. The man backed away from her apoplectic rage and mothers hurried their children to someplace safer. Someone needed to call the police. Someone needed to lock her up. No one in their right mind could get so upset about an audiobook. She stopped mid-ramp, mouth open, finger pointing at the fleeing man, realization coming to her in a divine flash. Mr. Simpson had been sending her a message. He was as trapped by that idiot narrator as she was. That had to be true. Why else would he continue to use him for every book? Why else would he allow his beautiful prose to be butchered so badly by that incompetent nincompoop? Hadn't the last word she heard before she couldn't stand it anymore was, I need help? Hadn't their unicorn been trapped by the zombies? Hadn't Sheldon, the rugged and handsome stable boy, told Lady Maria he needed help as she noticed his flowing hair and rippling muscles for the first time? Yes, yes indeed, he had, right before that blind clasted narrator ruined it by trying to scream in fright like the Princess Carmelita when the undead army of evil Prince Bartholomew was closing in on them. Yes, she realized, Mr. Simpson had been sending her a message. He needed her. He had sent her his own cry for help. She'd been behind the wheel all night, her sense of purpose driving her, guiding her and keeping her focused. 
She knew what she had to do. Her jug of coffee had grown cold, her diaper was wet and uncomfortable, and she was almost out of gas, but she couldn't stop. She was almost there. It hadn't taken very long to track down the narrator's address. Everything was on the internet, and occasionally she would break out in tittering giggles at what she was going to do to him. She would get rid of him so the world would never have to listen to him destroy her idol's inspired words with his juvenile sound effects. She'd written Mr. Simpson so many times, begging him not to use the narrator, but she'd been blocked. She knew he hadn't done it. One of his horrible people had. Why would he block his number one fan? She wrote him daily, sometimes 20 or 30 times, to prove her loyalty. He would never block her. The narrator must have done it somehow. He would pay for that, too. He lived in some backwater place a long way from nowhere. Just another Florida man story the whole world could laugh about if they ever found his body. He was near the swamps, and she was sure she could find a nice hungry gator to get rid of it when she was finished with him. They would only find bits and pieces in the alligator poo. She laughed and went a little faster. She'd teach him a lesson he would never forget. When she pulled into the driveway, she was surprised to see him sitting on his porch with a cup of coffee reading a sheaf of papers. The sun was barely up. She'd hoped to catch him asleep, but it didn't matter. She was on a righteous mission. She couldn't be stopped. She screeched and sprang out of the car, running towards him with a claw hammer in one hand and a hacksaw in the other. She'd teach him to ruin it for everyone. She'd make him scream in real horror, real sound effects, not the pathetic little jambali scrum wimpy noises he ruined the books with. She slowly woke up to the sound of someone crunching on a carrot. She tried to swat at the mosquitoes buzzing around her head and realized she was chained to the wall, her arms spread wide. Pesky little boogers, aren't they? he asked conversationally. Can't hardly even be outside without bug spray. He continued munching on the carrot and reading from the pages. She rattled the chains and tried to see where she was, but all she could tell was they were in a wooden shack surrounded by brackish water and huge old cypress trees heavy with Spanish moss. A fishing camp in the middle of the swamp, nothing around for miles and miles. I've been going back over some of the hate mail you've been sending me, he said, and I think I have to agree with you. My sound effects really aren't very convincing, so I've decided to up my game, give the fans what they really want. He smiled and indicated the computer and microphones on one of the tables next to her, screwdrivers, corkscrews, knives, and pliers on the other. I was just reading the latest manuscript Simpson sent me to narrate. Lots of zombie action, lots of screams and moans, lots of people dying. Since you're his number one fan, I know you won't mind adding a touch of realism to his next book. The narrator turned on the recording equipment, then thoughtfully chose which tools to start with.